until 1948, Christians in Judea, Samaria, and Gaza represented 20% of the population. According to a 1947 British census, there were 28,000 Christians in East Jerusalem. In 1967, after 17 years of Jordanian occupation, they numbered only 11,000, while they now represent only 1.5% of the Palestinian population. In 1967, the Arabs, they were at the beginning, of course, they were uh, fighting and they were attacking and everybody was victorious and that. And what they were saying was, after Saturday comes Sunday, which means that after we finish with the Israelis, it will be the turn of the Christians, which is Sunday. It's a very, it's, it's one sentence, but it says a lot. Allahumma ya Rabbana wa ya Mawlana wa ya Sayyidana Ihzim a'da'aka wa a'da'ad dini fi kulli makan Allahumma alayka bil yahudi wa man hawadahum Wa nasara wa man nasarahum Wa shiyu'iyin wa man shaya'ahum Allahumma ahsihim adada Wa qtulhum badada Wa la tughadir minhum ahada the causes of this exodus and gradual disappearance are many, but Arab propaganda, well orchestrated and often covered by the Western media, would have us believe that Israeli security measures are responsible. In 1948, Christians in historic Palestine accounted for around 18% of the Arab population. Today, Christians make up roughly 2% of the population of the occupied West Bank. They face the same level of discrimination as Muslim Palestinians. A 2006 poll of people living in Bethlehem, for example, found 78% of Christian respondents said Israeli aggression and occupation, in their words, was the main cause of emigration. Do they really have a choice, given the oppressive measures that terrorist organizations in charge of the Palestinian territories are capable of? In reality, when Palestinian Christians are guaranteed anonymity, or when they live in Israel and abroad, the truth comes out of their mouths. We live in a small society that everybody knows everybody. So we have, well, Arab friends, or we go to the market, we have Arab uh, grocery men, and this and that. So if you talk, you are afraid that your property will be attacked, your house will be attacked, so... It's, uh, it's, it's not safe, that's it. The Christian life in, um, in the Palestinian areas is very, very hard. Uh, they are not free, they are, they are there persecuted. Palestinians are stealing other Palestinians' lands, especially Christian lands. I have four uncles who lost half of their lands by people from Hebron. Just like that. They went to court to ask for the rights. The judge sadly was from Hebron, and he said, um, "I can't wait to see the three of you, the four of you, dead in the fridges." A church in Jerusalem was ransacked by Muslims. It is a living bread church. Uh, we tried to again bring it to the attention of world media. Not one outlet uh, has uh, taken up this, this persecution. It was not just a persecution, the whole church was ransacked. The people inside the church and also the pastor, um, they, were, uh, they were beaten up. Because Muslims were the perpetrator, uh, media hush up. Why is the world so obsessed with Palestinians? There are many theories about this, but I have a theory of my own. Uh, and I call it the theory of the inverted scapegoat. You see all over the world so many problems. You see wars in which hundreds of thousands of people are being killed and people are starving and all the rest. You can't do anything about most of these things. Uh, and so you find the inverted scapegoat is someone who you think, well, at least this problem we can solve. And then you pour all your efforts and money and everything else into solving that one little problem as an alternative to dealing with all the other problems in the world. So the Palestinians have been turned into a, an inverted scapegoat of this kind. They are the main ones. So while millions are dying or starving in Africa, all this money is poured onto the Palestinians. 
the real reasons for the decline of the Christian population under Muslim rule are of several kinds. First, the permanent harassment of which they are victims, repeated rapes, forced conversions, Palestinian laws based on Sharia. La situation dans les territoires palestiniens des chrétiens qui vivent elle est semblable à la celle et dans les autres pays arabes. Les Palestiniens persécutent les chrétiens. Les chrétiens sont persécutés, mais une persécution silencieuse. Persecution has made our church stronger. I've been beaten up and shoved in trash cans just for someone's of reason for discipling uh, other young men who are from another faith. My father has been, been shot at three single separate times for one simple reason, carrying that cross and walking every day and, and professing Jesus Christ and, and him alone. رايد من الشرطة بالزي العسكري باني غسارة بمية دولار غشني مخراز غشني نصب عليا ما صلحهاش ايوة نعم ما صلحهاش قال لي مضمونة ثلاثة اشهر ما صلحهاش كذب عليا بقول لي روح اتشك عليا بالعباس والنيابة ايوة نعم بقول لك شك عليا بالعباس والنيابه بقولوا له روح يا مسيحي خالد مطر رايد بالشرطه ممنوع تشك عليه رفضوا مني شكاوي ما رضيوش يستقبلوا مني شكاوي بالمره The world has been shocked by the brutality of the Islamic State terror militia especially as it has targeted the ancient Christian communities of Iraq and Syria these radical jihadists have swept into Christian towns and villages and committed horrible atrocities. Christian men, women, and children have been hung, beheaded, and even crucified. And without someone coming to the rescue, they feel more and more abandoned. But to really understand the enormity of this ongoing tragedy, we need to go back to the birth of the Christian faith here in this region 2,000 years ago. And that story, of course, begins here in Jerusalem, where Jesus was crucified, buried, and resurrected, and here on Mount Zion in the upper room where the church was born in fire on the day of Pentecost. Christians had been present in the Middle East for two millennia. After the Islamic conquest of 638, they, like the Jews, were subjected to the laws of dimitude, a status that made them third-class citizens with very limited rights and forced them to pay a racist tax reserved for non-Muslims called Jeziah. Dimi is a person who is not Muslim, qui doit, pour survivre dans un pays arabe musulman, pour ne pas être tué, il faut qu'elle paye des taxes. Ce taxe-là, il s'appelle jizya. Et les chrétiens ont été demandés pour payer le jizya. Ça nous rappelle Daesh, il y a quelques années, et en Irak et en Syrie, qui ont aussi à leur tour réclamé la jizya du chrétien qui habitait en Irak et en Syrie. Maintenant, ces Palestiniens, ils ont demandé la Jésia pour terroriser les chrétiens, pour leur dire ce n'est pas votre pays. My uncle was one of these Christians in the Bethlehem community who had to pay this, um, this money. But sadly, after a while, they, he's, him and, and others, other Christians, started seeing these people who called themselves freedom fighters, I call them mafia. They used to stand next to Christian houses, shoot and launch rockets at Israeli, at Israel, and run so that the response would come mainly upon Christian houses. <coughs> so what my uncle done was to decide to stop giving them money. They accused him for being a traitor. They put him in, in, in jail. They had no evidence against him. They had to let him out of jail. But after a few days, 
They shot him in his heart in front of his house and killed him. The status continued under the Ottoman Empire and is at the origin of the terrible conditions in which they live today. This baby that she's holding in her arms, he speaks up. And what does he say? Allah tells us in the Quran, Qala inni Abdullah. Qala, he said, Inni Abdullah. Most definitely, without a doubt, I am the slave of Allah. Jesus Christ was Jewish and he spoke Aramaic language. The, the, uh, the language for the, from the Talmud. Islam doesn't want to replace only 14 million Jews um, and not only to replace, um, I don't know, a billion Christians, but all of the world is Islam. Open Doors, a humanitarian association specializing in the defense of Christian rights, positions the persecution of non-Muslim Palestinians at a high level. On the 25th of April this year, residents of the Christian village of Jifna, near Ramallah, were attacked after a young woman filed a complaint against the son of a Fatah leader for fraud. Dozens of armed men ransacked the village. The Palestinian Authority has been careful not to intervene. On May 13th, vandals broke into a church in the Maronite community of Bethlehem and desecrated it. Three days later, it was the turn of the Anglican church in the village of Aboud. This type of incident is so frequent that an exhaustive list is impossible to establish. Muslims converted to Christianity are subjected to the worst anti-Christian abuses, and mere membership in a local church puts them at risk. In the law of the a Muslim, if he is converted to another religion, he is called Murtad, and we have the right to kill him. C'est-à-dire, eh, le fait de se convertir à une autre religion, c'est très délicat et c'est très dangereux. Je ne peux pas être sued par quelqu'un dans le Sharia pour le cours et le cours en Gia. Même plus tard, si ils nous ont ils ne peuvent pas prendre nos propriétés. C'est par la loi de la Constitution que je parle. Le cours de la Sharia est le nom de Jordan. Uh, everything we own, our property can be taken by the government just for being Christian converts. In Hawaii, you are up. I have the feeling that he's to tell me how the dean for you are up. I have the amal come out of several rasul or several larger law or kada. Then you tell me how the feel. Well, I said the agile and not see who I love an Islam. Islam in a lie. I had well, you read. Yeah, any more to Zaka. At the same time, the number of Christians living in Israel has increased from 34,000 in 1949 to 157,000 today. As Christians, as priests from the, the Holy Land, we, we believe this is our Holy Land. Here born our Lord, we grew up here uh, our roots as Christians. All the world now is, is silent for what's happening now in the Middle East. The Christians killing, the Christians fled. Just now we are a strong country and we, we must to be a strong country because we have here terrorist organizations. So much, not one, not two. And I call all the Christians in Israel to come and to integrate into the Israeli society and to go to the army, not because we love war. We love to kill. This is not our goal. Of course, we just because we want to support and to protect our home.
if the Christian world were to discover the reality behind the propaganda, there is no doubt that their opinion on the Palestinian Authority and its alleged tolerance towards minorities would change completely. Of course, like Arafat before him, Mahmoud Abbas acts every year to participate in Christmas ceremonies. Because the daily work of the Palestinian Authority and the media is to make Palestinians permanent victims of Israeli aggression. Oh, no.